So welcome, welcome to the house of the Lord. Um, it wasn't it wasn't your doing that um, brought you here today. It's all because of the Lord, and so uh, we have the wonderful opportunity to be able to open up the Bible and hear from God as He speaks to us through His infallible words. So let us pray. and we all say Amen. Amen. Uh, let's turn our books and our Bibles to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5. And today we um, are looking at another portion of this text. So we're into the home stretch, we're into the final part of uh, the whole letter of First Thessalonians. Uh, but we're particularly sort of looking at the last few verses of the whole book. So, Lotato Tilo Tilo, Ibaenga Poto Upu Ale Apostolo Paulo, Iletusimo Mualia, Itesalonia. So, have a look at verse 12, uh, right through to verse 22. That's the paragraph that we're covering um, over these last few weeks. So, Tilo Tilo Ifo Ile Faipo Sumale Dua, Anga Ile Faipo Luas. So we've been looking at this portion of scripture um, in regards or in light of how do we help the church grow. So we have been looking at this portion of scripture. So we might read um, the portion that we will look at today. And this is verses 16, 17, and 18. So, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Uh, we were looking at um, verses uh, 12 through to 22, and in a way to sort of help us understand what the Bible is trying to tell us in these verses, it can be easily broken down into three main sections. Verse 12 and 13 talks about the church growing with regards to their relationship between the church and the elders, or the church and the leaders. The second part that we can see in this paragraph is viewed in chapter in verse 14 and 15. Last week, we started to look at the relationship between one another. So there was a relationship between us and our elders and our leaders, and then there's a relationship between you and each other. Mm-hmm. 
mata i le vai asola te nei e aonga a wa tato te a poa poa i a i le tasi tato te fa a ma fa na fa na i le tasi tato te pe so so ani tato te ono sa i e i a i foi la mal vai nga moli moli na tato feita wina ina i a awone i taui masui. So last week when we looked at the relationship between each other, we saw five things. So we were to warn, uh, warn who? Warn those who are unruly. We are to look at comforting. Comforting who? Comforting those who are faint-hearted. And we saw that the definition of that word faint-hearted in its original Greek form was those who were little sold. Uh. So there were those in the church in Thessalonica uh, because they saw all of the persecution that they were starting to face, they became like uh, withdrawn. And so Paul was saying to the church, in order for the church to grow, we must warn those who uh, are, are, are sort of against the church or against the elders or against the growth of the church, but also comfort those who are faint-hearted. The last three parts were to uphold, you know, uphold each other inside the brethren. Number four, we were looking at patience. Be patient with one another. Another huge part of the church is to learn to forgive. Remember we saw the close relationship between the word patience and forgiveness. And the final part, the, five, the fifth part, was to not avenge. We learned last week that revenge is the Lord's and the Lord's alone. Amen? Amen. So we moved from relationship between the, the sheep and the shepherds was moved from the relationship between sheep and sheep or each other but now we move into verses 16 17 and 18 and that's what we read today that was rejoice always pray without ceasing and everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus for you we now look at your relationship between you and god your relationship as a christian your relationship as a part of the church of Jesus Christ what's your relationship to the great shepherd what's your relationship to the Lord Ia tō sanga oli oli pea lava, ia te tālo e lea o noa, ia o tō whaawhitai i mea umalava. O i, tātou te a mata o nga wā wā ai, i le wā whenga ia i o oe, le tangata kerisiano, ma lea tua. Amen? Le tai aonga le nei, o te whia tilo tilo i le whai upo e tasi. Whetaui whoi ma le whai wina whoi o mata upu la lao nga ino le nei tau sanga, so it's timely that we, you know, today's my final sermon of the year, but it's timely that we land on the final sermon and it's to rejoice. And so the title of today's sermon, um, we end on a, we end on a high, uh, we, end on, we end the year on a high and it's to rejoice. And it's for us to understand, well, what is rejoicing? We all know what joy is. If we ask, you know, what's the definition of joy? Everyone can give us a definition but today we want to look at, um, at joy from a scriptural perspective. We want to look at joy from a, from a, what does God tell us to describe the joy of the believer? Now, what our officiliat to let's say, Ole ni, ole ale winga ole oli oli, ole ale winga ole fia fia. E ma fai uma e tata o na tali le 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 winga ya ma fa ma tala o na ngai o inga ma ma ona fo linga ah. E ma fai o na fa ma tala e tata o. Aole tae aole nei, o te fia so so atu i ate o ele a ingo le whaatu atua, i le winga o le oli oli mai le ao a winga o le tusi pa ia. The reason why we want to have a look at um, joy from a, from a scriptural point of view, because joy is a human expression. So joy in its natural sense is a human expression. We all feel joy, it's a natural uh, emotion to feel. But, Joy for a Christian is supernatural. And the reason why it's supernatural, because when it's supernatural, when it becomes something that is equipped for the believer, it means that in all circumstances, 
we can experience joy. Let me say that again. For a believer, this is a supernatural um, weapon of warfare, actually. That it's not something that we feel, but it's something that we are. It's an attitude that we take on board because we believe. Uh, so in all circumstances, whether good or bad, a Christian, a true Christian, will always rejoice. Ole ole kirishiano fa amaoni. Ole mele ne ole oli oli. Elena ona osef. Elena osefa alangona. So otele ota ato a oli oli lesi itaimi. A fano no lesi itaimi. A fia fia lesi itaimi. Waita lesi itaimi. A ole soi fua ole tanga ta kirishiano. A tato va ava aile mele ta ua ole oli oli. Um ole oli oli ose mea lofa. Le la tato wa wa wina le taia ole ne. Ole oli oli ole ole a mio ole tanga ta kirishiano. Itaimi le lei. Mataimi faale le lei. Okay. Etu mawale oli oli. Ah. Na tato sa moa a oli oli. A seki mea uma. Wa oli oli. Aya faale tonu mea uma. Wa 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 le loa le oli oli. Wa fiu wa sue le oli oli. A oli tanga ta kirishiano. Pe fo lau le lei. Pe faale le lei. E yai le loto male anganga lea. O le tangata faolaina fa maoni e tu mau le oli oli o le laititi o le fai upu le fai mai fai pues full male o no ia o to sanga oli oli pe alava ai wa au mai le upu le tu le nita ya ina ia tato va ava ai ile soi fua o le tangata kirisiano ilona va o ia male tu that when you look at your relationship between you and God how do you rejoice how do I rejoice as a believer I can rejoice as a believer when times are running great, but when times are running not so great, as a Christian, the Bible says I must rejoice. It says there in Philippians 4, chapter 4, Paul uses very similar words. Philippians 4, chapter 4, Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So today we're going to look at the word rejoice. Today my final sermon for us here at Peachwood is looking at the life of and, and the attitude of a Christian with regards to joy. Amen. 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 So the first, I'm going to look at this in... Um, six parts today so there are six parts that we're going to look at with regards to rejoicing uh, the first part we're going to look at is for who God is we're going to look at rejoicing for who Christ is we're going to look at rejoicing in the response and the presence of the Holy Spirit with regards to God's word with regards to our eternal salvation and also with regards to suffering so we're going to cover those six areas over in the next few minutes. So, tato mata mata le tato fai upu ile ni taya o fa mai le fai tau wino fai puna es full male olo ia o to sanga oli oli pe alaba oli wino upu le oli oli ilona um ilona upu ele ni ole ole olanga fia fia e ya ile a mio ole fia fia e ile a mionga ole tau sa afia be o o vai na uma lava na e ma fai ya ona fa amatala ina le upu that when we look at the word rejoice, comes from the Greek word Cairo, and Cairo is to be glad or to be cheerful. Um, and then the, there's a second word there that we have in the English Bible, and that's always. So you are to be rejoicing, you are to be glad, you are to be cheerful. And then Paul adds in always. And the meaning of the word always from its Greek word, it's paratote. Para tote, and that's at all times. Now that may be easily said, but when you're going through a rough time, you don't feel like rejoicing at that time. Amen? There's a few nods in the audience, right? When you're going through a hard time, especially between, you know, family members or siblings or husband and wife, when you're going through that hard time, it's like, this is not the time to rejoice. <laughs> 
The Bible says, forevermore, at all times, rejoice. O temi uma, le soi fuo le olanga, fao le ino le tangata, i le vao oe la malea tua, e ta tau wai ona maua le vaenga le olo soi fuo kerishiano, e ta tau ona oli oli, i a tu mau, ma nei o le faasa moa, i a oto sanga oli oli, bea lava, e i le faa poponga le na a, e le na ona oli oli, e fa mai oli oli, bea lava, a, temi uma, so se va a engo le soi fuanga pe lunga la lo oli oli a e tu mau le oli oli fa mai le salamo na salau su mal valu fa ipo lu su mal fa o le asole nei o faia e jova ia tato oli oli ma fia fia iai and Psalms 118 verse 24 it says there this is the day the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it. I like how the psalmist says that it's present. This is the day. So when each day that we awake, that the Lord gives us, we rejoice and be glad in the day. The reason why the psalmist says this is the day that the Lord has made. It's not the day that you're going to make out of it. No, he, the psalmist is acknowledging that the Lord is the Lord of the day. So what's our response as a believer? Our response as a believer is to rejoice. Our response as a Christian, a true believer in Jesus Christ, is to rejoice. And Paul is reminding the brethren at Thessalonica in this short verse, rejoice always. Ah. Le oli oli, ma nei ei ole fama alusi al apostolo, ille e kalesia ite salonia. So joy is an attitude of every believer, and we want to look at that today in these first, uh, in these six uh, views. Number one, the first reason why we must uh, remain joyous or we should rejoice is for who God is. In Psalms 16 verse 11, it says, the psalmist writes there, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. That in the presence of the God that we serve is the fullness of joy. Mai ole mafu anga mua mua foilia ole tatawai ile tangata fa tua tua ona oli oli ah the reason why we as Christians can rejoice that's why some people may ask man why is why is that young man really different why is that Christian believer always seems to be happy nothing seems to get them down but it's because you know that your God in His presence is fullness of joy. Ah, ole mafu anga ona ole atuale na olo e au ona iai fa mai le fai salamu e lona itu tamatau le oli oli um fa mai fo ile salamu fa su matolu fa ipo fa ole atua o te matua fia fia iai o se ole si na atua le ole atua olo o tato au ona iai we can turn to Isaiah Isaiah chapter sixty one verse ten when we think about the God that we serve. When Paul is writing this verse to the brethren, he's writing to them knowing that this God that he serves is the God of joy. It's the God in whom he can rejoice. He said, "I want to talk with you almost from a taxi." See, that's all. Faith tells me the faith will is full. Amawa iya, fear fear ya yo, e oli oli lo loto i lo uwasua. Awa wana faa ofu wina au i ofu ole ola tanga. Wana faa pulu pulu wina au i le ofu ole a mi o tonga. E pei ole faa toa fai a va ua pu lou o ia se fai tonga. E pei ole faa toa no fotane foi ua teu teu o ia iana te hunga. In Isaiah 61, Verse 10, it has these lines, and this is talking about the good news of salvation. And this is the prophet Isaiah prophesying over the people of the Lord. 
I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. That's the rejoicing that Isaiah was prophesying to the people of Israel. When God will turn back to his people and save them. This is the joy that we have in our God. And, and Isaiah says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, he prophesies. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Ilokolosi <laughs> E tusa malona maalosi uwa sili sili. E iu ile ono sai umalava. Male fa ato atoa. Atoa male fia fia. O ile fai upulea. O lo tala noa mayei paulo. Ile tangata fa olaina fa maoni. E va ayeva aina ye ono olona soifua. Fa mayo le tangata savali e tusa male fina ngalo le atua. O le tangata e fia fia mayei le atua. Fa mayo le tangata e fua mai. Ah, e yelo na olanga e fua mai. So ie fa mau ni ai o lo tala noa Paulo ile tangata fa olaina o le tangata e tupu lo na iloa le lei o le tua fa mai o le tangata fo ie fa malosi. A fa mai o le baenga muli muli o fa ipu na ie fa ipu suma tasi fa mai e iu le tangata lea fa mai e iu lava ilea fa ato atoa ato male fia fia. So we fa au popo ile tangata leo wa fa au laina fa maoni ibainga uma o lona soifua le vainga le ole fia fia So in Colossians I was just trying to explain in Psalm 1 that this God that we serve that as a true believer Paul identifies what a true believer looks like in Colossians chapter 1 and this is what he reads uh, what he writes in verse 10 and 11 Describing a genuine believer, Paul writes that you may walk worthy. So a genuine believer is worthy. He walks a worthy walk. Two, he fully pleases God. Three, he's fruitful in every good work. Four, he's, there's an increasing in the knowledge of God. So the, a, a true Christian continues to grow in their life, in their spiritual walk, in their knowledge of God. If we continue in verse 11, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. So a true believer continues to build or continue to grow from strength to strength. But look at end of verse 11, it says, for all patience and long suffering with joy. That the addition to all of those confirmations of who we are as true believers is this term long suffering and joy. That for a believer, joy is a part of our lives. Why? Because we serve a living God. We serve a God that there is joy, this fullness of joy in the presence of God. Ah. So in my full on the oli oli, awa olota toa tua, olo yai le oli oli ah, olo yai le fia fia. So in my fai on the fapia, le ale my full anga olo oli oli momua. You might ask yourself, why shall I rejoice? The first part that scripture tells us is because in God's presence, in the God that you serve, there is fullness of joy. Number two, we also look at joy from the perspective that because of who Christ is. Now let's look at um, what the Gospel of John says about Christ and joy. <laughs> We're going to look at three scriptures in the book of John. John 15, John 16, and John 17. It's all only for you. Tato te maua mai upua Yesu e fa amatala e foi 
le loto a to Yesu ma le fola folanga ale a Yesu ke riso e fa tatau ile oli oli because he says in John 15:11 this is what Jesus says these things and he's talking to his disciples his disciples have no idea that after this evening he's about to die but listen to the listen to the words of Jesus Christ to his disciples on their final night and this is what he says to them these things i have spoken to you that my joy remain in you and that your joy may be full praise the lord Amen. jesus says to his disciples these things i have spoken to you that my joy remain in you and that your joy may be full so the same promises that uh, Jesus speaks to his disciples is the same promises that are also given to us as believers. O fola folanga a Jesus que riso e fa atatau ile oli oli e le na ona au so au tato u malaba o e taliton. Fa mai upo Jesus le Johanna na sulima fa ipo suma tasi. O au fa yatu nei me yate oto. Ina ia tu ma wai lo oli oli yate o to ia ato to a foi lo o to oli oli ha baenga lua ole ole tu ma ole oli oli le tangata fa atu atu a e tu ma ona ole fola folanga a Jesus Kristo. We can remain joyful. We can rejoice because of Christ's promise. Praise the Lord. In sixteen verse twenty two. Um, Jesus says, "This cannot be taken. No one can take this away." If you look at uh, 16 verse 22, this is the words of Jesus Christ. Therefore, you now have uh, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. The absolute assurance that our joy is because of who Jesus Christ is. Ole folo folanga Jesus Christ e fata tau ile va inga le a olo folanga Christiano le oli oli e ma fua ona o folo folanga Jesus Christ ma nei upo Jesus na fe pe lu su ma lu o le Ioane sful ma le ono fa mai o le nei le nei fo i wa ma wa nei o tau ele tinga a ta tau te tau e fe lo a i ma u ona oli oli a i le a o tau lo tau. Ele abe eseina fo i ese tasi lo o to oli oli ona o folo folanga a Yesu Kristo e ma fuai ona ma fai ona tu mau lo so i fua oli oli because of Jesus Christ we can remain joyful we can rejoice because of the promises of Christ praise the lord i love the words of his prayer in um John 17 uh, verse 20, uh, verse 13. Listen to the words of Jesus when he prays to the Father. But now I come to you. So Jesus is saying to the Father, I'm about to complete your work. I'm about to complete the mission. And he says, but now I come to you. And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Christians, we can rejoice because of the promises that Christ has given us. We can rejoice because Jesus says that he has his joy fulfilled in those who believe in him. So we've looked at the first two parts of rejoicing. The reason why a Christian can rejoice is because the God that we serve, there is fullness of joy. Number two, we can rejoice because of Jesus' promises. There is absolute assurance of our joy. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. The next time you face a situation and you need to say, man, this is really testing my joy. Reflect on who God is. 
Reflect on the promises of Jesus Christ. Because that's where in Christian, the world can't experience that because they do not know the Lord. Amen. The third part of um, rejoicing is found in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 15, 13, uh, the third part of our, our view on rejoicing, our view on joy is because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. We can rejoice in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Paul writes in the book of Romans chapter 15. Now there's a beautiful verse here about the work and the power of the Holy Spirit that enables us. So let's look at Romans 15 verse 13. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, Romans fifteen thirteen. Now may the God of hope fill you with all, all joy. So again, we understand that the God that we serve, is the, there is fullness of joy. So, and he says, and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we can rejoice because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. You as a Christian, for those of us who believe, we are indwelt with the presence of the Holy Spirit. The third reason that we can rejoice this morning, and may I bring that to our brethren today, as we continue to look at how do we grow in our faith, how do we continue to grow as a church, how do we grow in our spiritual walk, we have to have a view of our relationship between us and our God. And the first part of that is to rejoice. And it says rejoice always. Now we're looking at it as a view of, okay then, we can rejoice always because of our God, because of Jesus Christ. And third, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And Paul says there, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy. And how does God do that? Number one, uh, he says, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. The reason why we can be filled with all joy and peace is because we believe. Two, that you may abound in hope. So we abound in hope. Uh, our hope is in eternal life with Christ. And four, three, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can rejoice because we are empowered by the Holy Spirit who indwells us. Remember the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22? The second fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. Ah. Love, joy, peace. Ah. And then all of the other fruits of the Spirit. But the second fruit of the Spirit is joy. A genuine believer is a joyous one. Praise God. We come to the season of joy, but let us be reminded and actually, that's the fruit of who we are with the Spirit indwelt in us. So, Roma. Um, Amen. 
lua ona o folo folanga a Yesu Kristo. Tolu awa olo o ema futa male ananga pa ia olo o yaile ananga pa ia ito tonu yate oi. Amen. So a yaile te mi etau fa a le tonu ele oli oli i ema natu i mena e tonu ele ole oli oli ole lalo lalo a ole oli oli e tusa male fina ngalo male upu. So, if I na a man, I'm 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 we man, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm because of the scriptures, that you, as you continue to build your spirit, your faith, your walk with the Lord, can rejoice, can continue to rejoice, can rejoice ever more because of the word. Let's read Psalms 19, verse 7 and 8. Salamu alunam ta'apwe sefulu maleiva, feipwe fitu male feipwe valu. Famailuna feitawina, esao kiya. E sao le tula fono a yoba, e fa a fo isia ma yaile ana, e fa a ma oni polo a inga a yoba, e fa a koto inai le ua fai mo fie, e tolu fe au a yoba, e fa a fie fie ai le loto, e ma ma polo a inga a yoba, e ma la ma la ma ai matza, ah fai mo pe valu, e tolu fe au a yoba. E fa a fia fia ai le loto a o loto la no le fa salamo ile matautia ile taua o le afionga a le atua ai o le si ba ai nga tato te va ai ai fa mai o fe o tonu fe awa yova e fa a fia fia ai lo loto o le ale si au balai ma fa iona e tu mau wai lo oli oli o le ale si au balai ma fa iona tu mau wai lo fia fia Amen. Ah, so when we look at um, Psalms 19, it reads, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And may I suggest to us this morning that the fourth way that we can rejoice ever more the fourth way that we can rejoice always is because we have the scriptures it's the word of the lord uh, that when we look at um in colossians three sixteen, it says that when the word of God, uh, christ dwells in us uh, when we are indwelt with the word of the lord let me just read colossians three sixteen. let the word of christ dwell with you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You know, uh, when you are filled with the word of the Lord, you know, when you are indwelt, and it, Paul says there, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Ah, that means it's beyond, it's abundance. There's an abundance of God's word in you. It then says there, you can then teach, admonish one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You know when someone's singing, they're not necessarily singing because they're sad. Singing is the outward view of a joyful heart. Yeah. <laughs> For me, a Paulo ile e kalesi e kolose. Ma ia no fole a fiona a keriso i to tonu yate oto ia tele lava. O le ale mafu anga o le fie fie lea. O le ale mafu anga o le pese lea. Le ale mafu anga o le o siva fa lea nganga ma pe pese tuwa i o lato loto male fa fetai. O na ua tumu le loto ile a fiona a le a tuwa. O le o le pese o le mata o le si fai longa lea. Ole fia fia ole loto. Ah. Amen. So, fa nei ba ngai o tato matamatai ile mafua anga ole 
tu mau ile oli oli mua mua ona ole atua kolo oya te i olo oli lona itu tamatau le oli oli lua ona o folo folanga a Yesu Kristo tolu ona olo o mafuta ita tau malia nganga pa iya fa e au wala ilana upu so we've looked at four uh, views with regard to how can we rejoice all the time, knowing that in our flesh we can't do it. In our flesh we can't rejoice all the time, right? In our flesh we probably rejoice part-time. But let's have a look at the last two points I want to bring today. Number five is uh, this aspect of our, there's our salvation. When I talk about our salvation, it's, it's the eternal salvation. It's our eternal glory that we look forward to. Two, and then I just want to read First Peter chapter one, verse eight and nine. Ile mo mo pe teru alona mta upo mo mo. Olo ye upo ya pe teru fei po evalu male fei po eva. Ile o ilo atu o to ya te ya awa lo lo fei ya te ya. Ile o ba ya tu nei fo ya te ya a o lo o fa atu o tu ya te ya. To te oli oli ya male fei fei ele matala talaina esili esili eselaba. E mau o foi ele uma o lo o to fa atu atu a o le fa a o laina lea o o to wananga. Those of us with the New King James Version, can we read First Peter one verse eight and nine? Iya, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I want to bring um, a fifth reason today for us, and the fifth reason with regards to our rejoicing always, our rejoicing ever more, is because of our eternal salvation. Um, when we read verse、uh, eight, it says, "We have not seen Jesus, but yet we love Him." It says that now we do not see Him, yet believing. We rejoice with an expressible and full glory. You know the the motivation in your heart that one day you will see Jesus Christ. But it says there that that motivation, what you anticipate with regards to seeing Him, we、um, Paul actually writes says that you rejoice with joy inexpressible.、Uh, he sort of adds rejoice and joy inexpressible. All in one sentence to help us understand that it's beyond words. The joy that we have in anticipating seeing Jesus again, the joy that we have in anticipating our future salvation, is joy that we cannot put into words. Praise the Lord. Why? Because it's our eternal salvation. It's our eternal glory. It's to be with Jesus Christ. That's what causes our joy. Praise the Lord. At that time, faith alone, faith pure, valu man, faith pure. For my, for my, that time, tell you, Lord, that you are. Let us know a bit better. We are also we face all the winner. And for my, we are also we are face all the winner. For my, that time, tell you, Lord, that you are. Jesus, I will let you know a lot of your tears. For my, let you know a lot of your tears. Tato tele ova ayatu yate ya ay olo ofa atu atu yate ya tote oli oli ay malefia fia ele matala talaina ole 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 tama fai opete ru fa matala le oli oli lea fa mai wale ma fai upu ah ole oli oli lea ele ma fai ona e fa matalaina le ale oli oli lea. Ole tuli matai ole ola malemanuia. Ole tuli matai ole ola tanga amuli. Ole tuli lefa mai yai lefa ipuna e lefa ipua iva. Lefa mai e maua foi le unga olo oto fa atu atu a. Ole fa a ola ina le o oto manga. Le mafu anga le na e oli oli e pe teru matusi atu a. Itangata fa ola ina po tangata fa atu atu a ua fa sala la ina. Ele matala tala ina le oli oli le le a olo o tuli matai ole ola tanga amuli that with、um, joy inexpressible. I love how Peter writes: You rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 
That should be the other reason why you rejoice. The other reason why you as a Christian rejoice because you anticipate our eternal salvation. Praise the Lord. Um, so we've now covered five. Our last one that we want to cover is one that we've heard us speak about a lot of times. But it's one that's probably the most challenging for us as Christians. Because this joy is to rejoice in your sufferings. That when we look at suffering, suffering is not whether or not it will happen. As a Christian, you will suffer because you are a believer in Jesus Christ. And suffering comes in many forms. And we learn from Scripture that the suffering of the believers, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10, there was that list of all the suffering that he, that he endured, that he experienced. And in verse 10 he says, As sorrowful, he says, I was sorrowful, but yet I was always rejoicing. Imagine that art. Imagine being locked up in chains. Imagine being in prison. Imagine being beaten. Imagine being persecuted. Imagine being spat at. And yet Paul says, yet always rejoicing. Because Christians, we will suffer for our faith. Praise the Lord. And in James chapter 1 verse 2, James there, the head, the head of the church at the time, James says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. James was talking to a, a bunch of believers that were also suffering for their faith in Jesus Christ. And yet James was saying, you know all of the trials that you're facing? You know all of the persecution that you're facing? Count all of that joy. Count everything. Count all circumstances joy. Sawaina. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, there is going to be a time, you know, all of us, we may go through it together, but most of us will go through it on your own. Most of us will face or endure a time of hardship because of the stand that you've made, the decision that you've made for Jesus Christ, that choice that you've made, whether it be in a workplace setting, whether it be in your family setting, whether it be in a community setting, if you make a stand for faith, if you make a stand for believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ, there will be a time that you will endure suffering. You will endure persecution because of that faith. But James says, count it all joy. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, count it all joy. Paul says in Philippians 4, rejoice always. Ah, And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. In 1 Peter chapter 4, 13. More Peter, Peter. 4.13, sorry, I'm just going to read that in Psalm 1. 
to my toe if I have a pain on a tofu seer or toe fatasi iti na okay so ear or toe oli oli yai in a ear fear fear or toe male oli oli tele they are faalia mai lona mamalu let's say lona oli oli letter oli oli a pair fa fair nai oi mapuapuanga fa mai oli fatasi na oi mapuapuanga okay riso and manatu i puapuanga okay riso I family only only le na ete tu la ya ah family ya upo peteru fa pay on a tofu sia o tofu atasi iti na periso ia o to oli oli ya and first Peter four thirteen but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering that when you suffer for Christ you're partaking in the same suffering that Christ experienced but it says rejoice in it. Praise the Lord. For us as believers, for us as Christians, we must rejoice. Praise the Lord. That brings me to the end of the six points that I wanted to bring across today. Ona o Yesu, for for langa a Yesu. Ele ma fai ona ave esene se tasi lo o to oli oli. Tolu le ma futa mai o le nanga pa ia. Fa ona o le afionga pa ia ale atua. Lima ona lo tuli ma tai e tatu le ola e fa a bavau. Maleono e tatu ilo e ma fua ona tatu oli oli. Ile te mi o po po nga. So the, we've covered these six areas. So number one, for who God is, we rejoice because of who He is. Number two, we rejoice because of who Christ is and what Christ promised us. Number three, we also rejoice because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. There's the joy, the joy, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is joy. Number four, we looked at the Word, that when we have the Word and dwelling in us, Joy shows on the outside when we sing a song of praise and the song of fellowship. Number five, we looked at our eternal salvation. That should be a reason why you rejoice. Yeah. And number six, when we rejoice in time of suffering. But what happens when we don't have joy? Let me turn to an Old Testament uh, text for us. I'm going to finish off with this one. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 40. Uh, sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 47 and 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 47 and 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 47 and 48. E fatatau ile nuwa le atua ma le temi la atu te o esei ma le atua ona ola la atu leo sitai ile atua. Deuteronomy twenty eight verse forty seven and forty eight. I'm going to finish on this text and because we've covered a really wide portion of our uh, scripture with regards to rejoicing, right? But the question is, well, what happens if I don't have joy? What happens if I fail in my life of joy or my attitude of joy. Malefia fia o le loto, ona o le tele o mea uma, o le mea lea e te au auna ai malefia ai, malefia inu, malele lava lava, male mativa i mea uma lava, i e ita ia te oe, e au wina mai e yova ia te oe, na te faa e e fo i le amu a mea i lo ua, se ia faa o matia oe e ia. I have a le 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 matautia o le fa salanga a le atua ilona no ona o le au no o le oli oli ilolato so ifu au au na ile atua na tuwi na atua ile atua ina ia fa salaina 
le nuo israelu ai sea fa me fai pefa su me fitu o le au auna ila to ya yova male oli oli male fia fia o le lotso ai sea ona u au noa male talitonu that if we read um, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, and these are, these are God's words to his people. And this is him talking to Israel, and he's talked about, hey, these are my laws. If you abide by them, you will be blessed. So we're looking at Israel in its general, in its widest context. But I just want us to zo um, zoom in into this particular verse, because this is the result of unbelief. And unbelief is the result of no joy. Because listen to what God says to his people. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything, therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst and nakedness and in need of everything. And he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. Did that happen to Israel? Yes. Why? Because they kept on not believing in the God that they serve. They kept on turning to the pagan gods of the world around them. But it says there in 47, Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness. You know, when we serve our God with joy and gladness, that's us responding to Him and saying, We believe you wholeheartedly. When you respond to the Lord, when you're going through a difficult time and you say, Lord, I'm going through a really hard time, but I'm going to trust you and I'm going to rejoice. It's you telling the Lord that, Lord, I believe in you. I believe that you're always in control. I believe that you are sovereign. I believe that your providence will always come through. That the joy of the world, it's a joy that passes by. It's a joy that is dependent. It has dependencies. But the joy in the Lord, we now understand, it's because, it's because God, there is fullness of joy in His presence. Two, Christ has given us those promises of joy. Three, the presence of the Holy Spirit causes us, enables us joy. It's the fruit of the Spirit, it's joy. Four, the Scriptures, when we get ourselves into His Word, it rejoices our heart. Five, because we look at eternal salvation... That we anticipate the return of Christ. That's our joy. And six, when we do go through the suffering part, we rejoice. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So be encouraged. That's, that's my last sermon for 2022. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I won't be speaking here next week. There's another guy coming through. But man, you know, praise the Lord that you know, we're able to come through and end the year in this message about rejoicing, and I know that we're going to go through the summer period, guaranteed, brothers and sisters, you're going to go through a rough patch. You know, I was studying this word today, and I was going, man, Lord, I wonder what's going to happen next week. Because usually the test comes straight after I speak on something, right? Yeah. So the test is to rejoice. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Um, and so, brothers and sisters, be encouraged. The word for us today, remembering this is the portion of, um, Thessalonians where we're looking at our relationship with God. Amen. Let us stand and let us pray. Ya fa tai tai mai upo le nita talo a tato fa i wina ile nita usanga e awala ile a o wina le upo le tua. Let us pray together. I'm going to pray. You can just follow through with the words that uh, we will pray with today. Tato talo. 
Amen. Father, we are so privileged uh, to be able to go through your word this year. And Lord, um, we've been covering uh, First Thessalonians for the last uh, half a year. And Lord, what a wonder, um, you know, from understanding this church and understanding the heart of Paul for this church, um, right through to understanding the day of the Lord and um, the, the time that you would take and remove the believers in the rapture. Um, right through to this final portion of the letter, understanding our relationship with our leaders, our relationship with each other, and now understanding our relationship with you. And that, Lord, is, uh, you know, kick-started with, you know, how do we rejoice as Christians? We know that uh, joy is not a, you know, joy can be a worldly emotion, but we now understand that joy and rejoicing is an attitude that we as believers must uphold because of who you are as God because of Jesus Christ, your son, and the promises that he has given us, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, the scriptures, and the fact that we anticipate the return of your son. And Lord, even reminding us that through our suffering, through the fact that we will suffer as Christians, we must always rejoice. And so, Lord, we praise your name. We thank you for your faithfulness. And we bless your wonderful name. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Tato lalo mai lalo faftai.